Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Today's product is the Sun Gold Power 130 watt folding suitcase kit. Is it any good? Let's find out. As the name states, it is a folding suitcase kit, which unfolds from its soft case. It includes this really long and heavy duty battery clamp with MC4 connections. A little bit of an upgrade from version one. If you guys wanna see my original video on version one of this panel, which was like, I don't know, two years ago. I'll put that link up here in the corner. This is an improved panel. It's got a little bit more power output, a different controller. Uh, it seems to be overall just a better setup than the original. It's got legs that fold out, of course. And so you can set it upright. Just like that. If you're wondering about the specification, size, and weight, I'll put that at the bottom of the screen. Let's get on to the testing. All right, I got this fancy new solar incidence meter. It's gonna tell us exactly how many watts per square meter we're getting right now. So I gotta pull it, put it directly towards the sun. So we're getting about 1080. Solar panels are rated at 1,000 watts per square meter, so I don't test them anymore unless it's at least 1,000 watts. Now up here in the mountains, we'll get up to 1,300 watts per square meter sometimes. So today's not really the best day, but this is the only sun we've had in five weeks. We're gonna go ahead and roll with this. And if you guys really want a $100 meter, I have these on my Amazon page. Now the Sun Gold Power panel is actually set up from the factory to charge a battery directly, like a battery in your RV or a starter battery in your car. It's not designed to actually charge a solar generator. In order to use the Sun Gold Power to charge a solar generator, you have to make a change, and that is to bypass the built-in solar controller because solar generators already have a solar controller. So you don't wanna put a solar controller on top of another solar controller. It simply won't work. So I'm gonna show you this just takes a screwdriver and two minutes of time to bypass the controller so you can use this for a solar generator. So all you need is a screwdriver that will fit inside here. You see there's a red wire here, a black wire here, a red wire here, and a blue wire here. These two are the input from the solar panel. So you have positive and negative, and these are the output to the clamps, which is positive and negative. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna put positive with positive and negative with negative, and that will bypass the controller. And let me guess, that one's not gonna fit either. Nope. All right. Once you've loosened these screws, just pull this out. And once you've loosened these screws, this comes out. So this goes to the clamps. This goes to your solar panels. Now, if you wanna make this a permanent change, in other words, you never plan on using this controller for anything. You're never gonna charge a battery directly. You can actually use one of these and They'll fit right inside there. These are basically heat shrink connectors. Once you get those in there like that, you can just clamp it and then heat shrink that and do that for the other one. You can get these heat shrink connectors anywhere. I think I have them on my Amazon page. And that'll make this change permanent. So you won't be able to use a solar controller anymore. This is a really kind of low-end solar controller anyway, but if you're planning on using this for a Jackery or a Blue Eddy or an EcoFlow, you're never gonna charge a battery, you can make this permanent change. However, since I'm not making this a permanent change, I'm just gonna do something temporary. So it comes with this MC4 connector that goes to the wire. And then the other side goes to these clamps. I was trying to think of a very quick, easy way to do this, and I was like, oh, you know what? I could just take these apart, and now I got clamps that go to MC4. How convenient, because that's what I need to use to test. So what I'm gonna do, and I don't suggest you do this because it's kind of haphazard, <laughs> is I'm just gonna connect the clamp positive and clamp negative, and then I'm gonna make sure they don't touch because you don't want these two to touch, that would be bad. It's not gonna short out the panel or hurt your solar generator. And it's very low voltage, so it's not like you're gonna create sparks and things are gonna catch fire, but you don't want them touching. So I mean, just, <laughs> just something like that. Uh, they're actually not touching. Just something like that's good enough for my test because the amount of power going through here is so low that that connection's not gonna make any difference. It's not gonna make or break uh, how many watts I, I test this for. So let's go ahead and use this, and I'm gonna go ahead and use this MC4 side to connect to my tester. Now the panel's only been in the sun for a few minutes. Let's see how hot it is. That's about ambient temperature, so. See the ground's a lot hotter, 150 degrees and the panels are slowly climbing, 94, 95 degrees, so we better get our testing started. As you can see, open circuit voltage here is actually pretty nice, 22.8. 
So that's pretty high. That's very good. That's a show you it's using quality panels. Now let's go ahead and see how many amps we can pull. We're at 103 watts, 104. So there we go, there's the official number. About 103, 104 watts. 16.4 volts around 6.3 amps. So these results are actually pretty good. When I last tested the previous version of the Sun Gold Power 130, I was down in Tucson, Arizona, much lower elevation. It actually scored an exact 100 watts out of 130. Today we're getting about 104 out of 130. Then again, we're a little higher elevation, but if you notice behind me, the edge of the sky is kind of hazy. We've pretty much had five straight weeks of rain, clouds, moisture. Today is only the second sunny day in a row. I didn't want to do this yesterday because it was even more hazy, but today is a little less hazy, but you could see all along the horizon a lot of haze. So we're only getting around 1,080 watts per square meter. That's around where these panels are rated at. Now, if this was a perfectly clear day in the spring or fall, I'd probably get around 110, 115 watts because we'd have around 1,300 watts per square meter. In any case, that means in a lot of situations, even at lower elevations, you can expect a good solid 100 watts out of this 130 watt panel. Okay, let's do a couple of real world tests. I have a Blue Eddy and a Jackery. I have a Jackery 1500 and a Blue Eddy EB150. Let's plug in the Sun Gold Power 130 and see how they do. We have the Jackery Explorer 1500 here, plugged into the Sun Gold Power 130. We're getting about 98 watts. It says it'll take five hours to charge from 74%. Not too shabby. We're getting about the same results from the Blue Eddy EB150, 98 to 99 watts from the Toasty 130 watt Sun Gold Power. There you go, some real world results from two separate power stations. Both tell us charge about 100 watts, no problem. Do note that the Sun Gold Power solar controller will not come on unless you hook it up direct to a battery. And when I say battery, I don't mean a solar generator. I mean a lithium or lead acid raw battery. I now have the Sun Gold Power hooked back up to a typical shoddy old lead acid battery for the next test is to see how well it charges a battery. Now the Sun Gold Power does come with this cover. So when you fold it up, you can put it away in its nice soft case. It doesn't really come with any instructions though. So you're kind of on your own figuring it out. The Sun Gold Power has been in the direct sunlight for approximately 20 minutes. It is now up to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, so that is going to reduce the amount of power coming out. This one's actually showing 12.6 volts, so it's not dead. So now we actually have a functional battery. Let's hook it up to the Sun Gold Power. Well, it is certainly charging it. Look at that voltage climb pretty quickly. Clamp meter on the positive terminal is telling us we're pulling in about almost a half an amp. See if we can get to some of the settings here. So you can actually turn on and off charging by pressing that first button. So you sort along press the first button that takes you in the battery setting. So 13.7 is the cutoff voltage. I think once your battery gets to that voltage, it's gonna stop charging. Long press again. Uh, that looks like the load is 12.6 volts. So I wonder, can I modify this in some way? Doesn't look like it. These things are so confusing. 24 hours to run the load, okay. Battery one. Eventually. So I spent the last 30 minutes trying to figure this thing out. The only button that seems to do anything is I can get the load to turn on and off with a long press, and I can go through the, the menu with a long press, but I can't seem to program anything in here. Like this says 24 hours, you think you'd be able to change that, right? So here we go, I long press. Nothing. Long press the middle button, nothing. Single click, single click, double click, triple click. If I single press that, double press that, nothing. I've tried holding both buttons down at the same time. I tried these buttons at the same time. Um, this thing's just impossible to figure out. Maybe there's some online instructions, but I'm gonna suggest if you need to program something, just bypass this controller. I have Renogy, Wanderer for like 15 bucks on my Amazon page. Just just bypass this thing and get something better. It's just kind of a piece of crap. It does the job, but you kind of think they'd put something better in here that wasn't so impossible. I mean, nothing is happening when I press these buttons. I should be able to program this voltage. I should be able to tell it, okay, I want you to charge it 14.4, but no matter how long I hold the buttons, no matter how much I press, nothing seems to change. So, that's gonna be my review of the controller.
So what do I think about the Sun Gold Power folding suitcase kit? Well, the last one survived a fall about 12 feet off an RV on the gravel, a bunch of big rocks. It did damage a little bit of the metal, but the solar panel stayed intact, the solar controller kept working, and we ended up using it for the entire camping trip, which was great. Now, is this new version that much more improved? Uh, I don't think so. The solar panels are excellent. They are high quality panels. The cabling has certainly been upgraded. This is a much better cabling system than what they included before. But the solar controller, I feel, is a step back. It's impossible to program if it can even be programmed. I mean, I've been doing tech for 25 years. If I can't figure out a solar controller in 30 minutes, it probably isn't any good. So I'm gonna suggest if you really need a programmable controller, you can still buy this, just put your own controller on it. Or if you're not going to charge a lead acid battery to begin with, which most people don't have lead acid anymore with this lithium age coming in, maybe it's a good idea to just bypass that controller, charge your Jackery, Blue Eddy, or EcoFlow. And for this, that's excellent. But if you still are charging lead acid batteries, all you have to do is simply hook up the clamps to the battery, aim this thing towards the sun, and forget about it. Because it will work right out of the box without any programming, and you don't have to worry about it. Just be aware the solar controller isn't very good. If you're interested in the Sun Gold Power Panel, the link is in the description below, along with a special code for Hobo Tech viewers. It'll give you a certain amount off this solar panel. If you want to see the price, click the link in the description. Don't ask me in the comments, I'll simply ignore you. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, <laughs> you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. And who said pretty things don't grow in the desert? I did not plant these. These are some kind of weed. I have no idea where they are. If you're a desert plant expert, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of curious what these things actually are. RV Golf Guy, Aunt Medicaio, Andrew Vaughn, Roger Cardano, Brian Lubbers, Johnson, Jason Soroka.